thrown its support back behind Republican candidate Judge Roy Moore after pulling staff and money just weeks ago. This is one of his accusers is sharing what he calls, or rather what she calls, evidence that she dated Moore when she was 17 years old and he was 34. She told the Washington Post she found a storage bin in her attic that she'd forgotten about. Inside that storage bin, a scrapbook with a card Moore gave her when she graduated high school and notes that she'd written detailing time she spent with him. She tells the Post she wants Moore to stop calling his accusers liars. He continues to deny the claims against him, speaking out in a radio interview just yesterday. Listen. What they've done to me is not only unforgivable, it's... it's uh just pure hatred and it's pure spite and it's pure evil and wrong and they have uh, made up stuff that I would never even consider doing. This is the most uh, dirty uh, political race I've ever been in and I think anybody could be in. So I think the people of Alabama see through it. I think they're coming around and I think we're going to win. Once this uh, political season is over next Tuesday, it'll be gone. Hmm. Nothing will ever be said about it. President Trump endorsed Roy Moore yesterday. Dan? You know, here's the problem I have, and I want to explain this to Marie, why, why I feel the way I do. Uh, why well, you think my party is full yeah, of Yeah, full of frauds. Yeah, they are. They're just complete frauds. I mean, I'm talking about the establishment people, not the rank-and-file Democrat voters in America. But here's the issue I have with this. We were told years ago in the Clinton era that morals don't matter. The economy was doing well, and it was under the Clinton years. Nobody denies that. Morals don't matter. What he did in his personal time makes no difference. So now we're in, as, as Ben Shapiro said in a great piece, we're in the classic prisoner's dilemma. Now, morals don't apply to Democrats, but when it's Republicans, Roy Moore should leave immediately. So what are we going to be left with then? A bunch of sexual harassers up in Congress and in the White House who are always Democrats because they don't have to step down. I'm sorry. Until we can agree on a standard set of rules, <laughs> allegations are made, you leave. I, I don't blame the people in Alabama one bit for saying, nope, if we're going to do this, our guy's going. Oh, in. I don't know. Marie? I, yeah, I, can I defend Marie for a second please, here? Please, I think that there is, a, uh, there is a lot of what you just said to go around on both sides. A lot of people are looking out for their political best interests, and it doesn't matter which side of the aisle they're on. Everyone's guilty of doing that right now. It is up to the voter. You listen to the people. You listen to the accusers. You decide for yourself what you believe. Mm -hmm. and you go into that booth, and you vote your conscience. And maybe your conscience cares more about issues than it does about what happened to these women. That's why the booth is secret. You go do your right. thing. But there is hypocrisy on both sides of the so aisle. So can I bring up one thing, though? Because, and I don't know where Senator John McCain and some others are on this issue now, but early on with this, with Roy Moore, they were talking about the constitutionality of trying to unseat him. Yeah. After the Alabamians had their say, because they agreed that constitutionally the voters get the say. And then what happens when you get to the Senate is up then to the Constitution and the senators making a motion. Katie? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that that would be uh, unwise for Republicans to reverse the decision of, of the voters in Alabama. This is a choice that they're going to have to make. It's a bad choice, whether it's Doug Jones or, or Roy Moore. If I lived in Alabama, I wouldn't be voting for either one of them, but I don't. It's not up to me. But I want to go back to what uh, you were saying about the double standard. Yes, this happens on both sides of the aisle, but here's the difference. If you go back to the 2012 presidential election between Mitt Romney and Barack Obama, and you, look at the, and you look at the double standard that was held there, for decades, it is true. Republicans have tried to take the high road on the morality issue when it comes to sexual abuse and assault. They have resigned. They have uh, been shamed out of office. Mitt Romney was accused of having binders full of women, right? That was the big controversy surrounding Mitt Can Romney. And yet, at the DNC in 2012, they had a seven-minute-long tribute video that called Ted Kennedy a women's rights advocate <laughs> when he had left a woman to drown in his car. And that is where the frustration and, is. So let me if we're going to find Mitt Romney, then we're I, I want to pick up on Mitt Romney for just a second because yeah. he tweeted about Roy Moore and this is what he said. Roy Moore is in the U.S. Senate would be a stain on the GOP and on the nation. Lee Korfman and other victims are courageous heroes. No vote, no majority is worth losing our honor, our integrity. Look, Mitt Romney, uh, regardless of whether you like his policies or not, is a good person. I think uh, has his morals and principles in the right place. And we can go back to Clarence Thomas, who the GOP supported despite allegations. There are right. people on both sides. We are having a reckoning in this country with how to deal with sexual assault and sexual harassment. Yeah. And by saying it's all Democrats, 
or it's all Republicans. We are avoiding the, the hard conversations about how to deal so, with it. And we have Republicans like Representative Farenthold, who paid $84,000 <laughs> in a settlement. Are you calling on him to resign? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Are you but calling on Donald Trump to I resign? I have no problem saying that, though. <laughs> but the Democrats don't. And, 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 but, but the let's... Democrats, I am a Democrat who sits here every week and calls on people like John Conyers to resign. Yeah, but where's the, where, Marie, you're where's not in Nancy power Pelosi? right now. Where's Nancy Pelosi for two weeks? Where, where is, where's well, the Senate calling for Al Where's the RNC, the NC? where's the All RNC right, calling so, on uh, Representative Farenthold or Paul things. Ryan? To resign. I'm sure. I'm that sure. I want to just point out as facts. I'm so not Roy sure. Moore is alleged to have done some things that happened, and he's not in Congress. Yeah. Al Franken is alleged to have done right. some things before well, he, he got to Congress. Right. I just want to set and it straight because it's a little it's a little different now. As more people have come forward, Al Franken may be right. in the shadow, as you said, of things that have happened since he's been in office, which changes the game. Do we have time to stick up that response from Roy Moore to Mitt Romney? Uh, mm. Either Mitt Romney has lost his courage, or he doesn't care about truth anymore. Sad day. America's reawakening was led by Donald Trump, not you, Mitt. Either we believe women or we don't. And obviously you have to look at every case. You have to look at the facts. They're all different. They're all yeah. different. Absolutely. But we are at a point in this country where women finally feel like they're being believed. And for politicians like Roy Moore to call them liars... I think that's offensive uh, to Republicans. Yeah, I want to give you a quick password. Calling people liars? One, the Clarence Thomas was a hit job, so that was total nonsense. So we don't Secondly, believe her? No, not at all. Okay. And I, I think, the, I th as a former investigator, I think you weigh the evidence. I think Roy Moore, the victims are very believable. But I I'm agree. tired of Demo Democrat hypocrisy. They're hacks on this. They have no credibility at all. And hypocrisy, yes, on both sides. You're right, Melissa. But it's the degree of, the degree of hypocrisy that matters. And Democrats are at the top of Kilimanjaro for hypocrisy right now. I'm sorry. I had the privilege of working with and for her as a Secret Service agent. I found Mrs. Clinton to be the most deceptive human being, manipulative political person in a position of power I'd ever met in my entire life. It wasn't so much that she was a liar. It was that she did it and she deceived and manipulated with such ease. So that Liar. was Dan Bongino. Oh. Yes, strong Huge words from fan. Dan Bongino, on, yeah, uh, as many of us are, on Tucker on Wednesday. We're going to bring in Dan right now. Dan Bongino, former Secret Service agent, former NYPD officer, and the host of the Dan Bongino show. So, Dan, you triggered a few people, especially some former uh, Hillary Clinton staffers who took to Twitter and had a different view of whether or not you have a view of Hillary Clinton. This is uh, Nick Merrill. He was a traveling press secretary, an aide to Hillary Clinton. This is what he tweeted after your segment on Tucker on Wednesday. He said, I've worked for Hillary Clinton for a decade and two things are true. She has enormous respect for the Secret Service and a great relationship with the agents on her detail. And two, this guy, meaning you, was never on the Clinton's detail, and I don't recognize him in the slightest. So, Dan, uh, you know, the Internet has a way of working these things out. Uh, I think you were a part of pushing this out as well. There are some photos, pesky photos that have emerged of you uh, oh, on her go. detail. The photo uh, doesn't lie. That looks like a young, dashing, handsome Dan Bongino. We're going to ask him also <laughs> about what happened between that photo and now. But, but the point is... The photos don't lie. It's the same, you know, Al Franken can get away. Yeah. Dan, what do you say now that this has played out? Yeah, that's interesting. That photo was taken in 2001 at the U.S. Open tennis tournament and was on the back cover um, of Newsday. Uh, it was actually a color photo. I don't know why I made it black and white a long time ago to make it seem more, what, I, I, I give some emotion in it or something. I'm not sure. But I had it on an Instagram. Now, what's interesting about that is th these people are very clever, the Clinton mob out there. They always attack the messenger when you go after the Clintons, right? And he says something. He goes, well, he was never on the detail. And he's right. I was not on her presidential campaign detail. But I was there way before Nick arrived. My mounds of work and the government documents I have showing my pile of work with the Clintons is probably this thick. I knew the Clintons probably before Nick did. So it's just interesting that he would pick a fight with me. Let me just make this point, guys, too, because this is important. This is how the Clinton mob works, right? What they do is they need the Clintons to stay in power and to stay relevant. So they need to discredit anybody with information on the Clintons that may impugn their reputation and cover up the bevy of secrets that are still out there. I'm telling you guys, because sources feed me stuff all the time. There's stuff out there on the Clintons that hasn't been made public. And believe me, they know it because they were there when it happened. So, so, so stop for one second, Dan. I, I want to get your take on how this actually made you feel when Nick Merrill put that out, a communications guy, a spin guy. That's what he does for a living. This is what the 
press folks in Washington do. Put that photo up for one more second. You're sitting literally behind her in the proximity, and your job at that very moment, your job is to protect her should the unthinkable happen. You're very close, perhaps the closest in proximity to her. We have seen certainly in public events like this, things can happen. You, your life is technically on the line there, and we shouldn't overlook that point. How does it make you feel when Nick Merrill says, nah, you weren't even there? Yeah, well, well, it's kind of disgusting, and he's a disgusting human being. He really is. He's never put his life on the line for anything other than maintaining the sad, sick political aura, the Clintons. And, and you know, I say to Nick, uh, who tweeted that and, you know, went after me, the message, that's fine. You're certainly entitled to do that. I respect your right to fight back, uh, but I'm going to fight, too. You know, I, I swore an oath to the Constitution in the Secret Service. Uh, I did not swear an oath to cover for your mi the misdeeds of your messiah, Hillary Clinton, and neither did the people who contact me. I can't give them up. And, you know, fair enough, Griff, some people have said, well, you know, if you have information, put it out there. I totally understand that. I get it. But I don't think you understand the position I'm in. These are friends of mine and associates who have contacted me over the course of many years with very damaging information on these people that is unimpeachable and more than credible. I can't just put it out there without getting them hurt. If they say to me, listen, this is here, but I'm afraid to talk because they're afraid of the Clintons, which they are, I'm not going to get them and their families and put them in, in potential jeopardy with their jobs. It's an awkward position to be in. But the Clintons got to be very careful about poking that bear. And Dan, I'm telling you, I, I can't say this enough. People know what happened with them. Dan, we want to hear from you on a, another topic as well. Um, an MS-13 victim was stabbed 100 times. His heart ripped out of his chest in a sanctuary jurisdiction out of Maryland. Uh, so so yeah. does, when we hear stories like this, obviously President Trump has talked about MS-13. He talked about uh, the gang uh, on the campaign trail. He's also talked about it as president of the United States. When we hear stories like this, doesn't this make it more difficult for critics to oppose sanctuary jurisdictions? You know, Lisa, the critics have no point. You know, we, we just passed Thanksgiving, right? And I think everybody thanks God every day for our fighting men and women and them keeping this country safe, right? And that flag that they drape themselves in overseas. What does that mean to you? No, I'm serious. Like, to the listening audience out there, and I know we have a lot of liberals, of course, you're always welcome to put your eyeballs on the channel, but what does that mean to you? Like, we have jurisdictions now that have taken that flag and thrown it out the window and said, hey, anybody's welcome here anytime for any reason. Policies and laws be damned. And what happens? What happens is people die. People are killed in the real world when really stupid people in positions of power throw the flag, the laws, and the rules and regulations out the window and let anybody and their family come in despite the rules and regulations. I ask one simple question to those people. Where do you want to go if you are a potential criminal coming into the country illegally? Where? Do you want to go to a sanctuary county? knowing you will never be reported to, the, uh, to uh, immigration for deportation sure. and you'll be almost protected by local police? Dan, or you want to go to a law and order county? Where do you want to go? Dan, Pretty you ran, simple answer. You ran, dude, we only have a couple of seconds here. Dan, you ran for Congress in that very district. How bad is the MS-13 problem there? Uh, Pete, it is, it is a... It is a it, uh, it's it's off the I can't, it's like a nuclear explosion of illegal immigration in that county. It's worse than anybody knows. Go there and check it out if you think I'm if you think I'm misleading you. All right. Well, well I don't think you are. So uh, no. We'll take you. your word for it, uh, Dan. Thank you so much for joining us. Dan, this appreciate morning. it. Thanks we a lot. Appreciate it. Thanks all.